Welcome back to the Goat One Armcast. Back for another round of sodium filled content. Uh, and as you can probably see in the top left hand corner, there are more voices in this chat this week. Uh, along with the usual Guthrum Norvik, ju Just Eastern Things. Oh, hang on. No, he's not in, is he? <laughs> well, fuck me, I guess. Um, excluding the usual Just Eastern Things, we have. The usual Guthrum of Norvik, the Shire Reeve, and this week returning, we have Ross the Roman and the most mediocre Icelander, um, Conrad. Hello. Hey guys, it's good to be back. Awesome. You've got my name wrong again. I'm just, yeah, I, well, I'm just well, disappointed you. because, frankly, um, I thought we all vowed never to let Conrad back on back on the podcast. Don't worry about it, the window was open. Yeah, unfortunately, um he's we put someone put fifty P in him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, guys. That is the sound of a fifty P going crazy. Right. <laughs> Who are we ripping on? <laughs> now 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 we're gonna hear about all those things that Ashley told us not to mention before we started. Yes, yeah. did someone say home? No, no, not going to go there. <laughs> <Don't> even... <laughs> That's getting we, cut out. We'll do that in a later episode when it's appropriate to do so. Yes, when everyone's uh, testosterone. What, embarrass ourselves? Out. Yes. <laughs> like <laughs> something I do on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, I totally yeah. don't embarrass myself. Uh, we'll we'll let, let the dust settle on that one, because honestly, we'll just be firing blind at this point. But uh... <laughs> that's what I as really opposed do. to the usual firing blanks. Man, I always just wish I, I wish I was firing something. Oh, yeah. So, how's everyone's week been? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no that's gonna... that's oh, not gosh. your line. Yeah, that's my I... line. Jeez. <laughs> Someone wants my job. Uh, I now go one. I would not want to steal your job ever, ever. It's yeah, far well, too much like hard work. <laughs> I Is mean, it just you don't have to paint fifty Normans like in less than a month, mate. That's piss easy. Airbrush them all silver, slap some black wash on, done. No, nah, I can't draw in MS Paint. That's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trick so, is, what you do is you make um, you make Warhammer models and do your comics with pictures of Warhammer models. Ah. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah sorted. Sorry, and, sorry. I'm am taking I gonna... the job, mate. Yeah. Okay, I, I can't be the one that has terrible finishing on the face, like way too thick paint. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, you what's, what's that about finishing on your face? On your face? <laughs> uh, you know, you know. Brings so... me back when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No, oh, no, no, daddy, no, it tastes like the sea. <laughs> that wasn't even my dad. Um, We're going to start off with a little look at the upcoming Go One Arm Band post the Battle of Hastings. Woo! Uh, oh, do we have to? Fuck. <laughs> Look, if I'm going to spend all my waking hours painting up miniatures this bastard project, then yes, we get to talk about it. Oh, fuck I mean, yeah. I think I think Shire Reef would have a point if it wasn't for the fact that you've gone and painstakingly converted and painted a model for him. Of uh, his I, don't, I don't have a point. It was a joke, Ross. <laughs> Oh, well, that got serious. Yeah. So, as you may now have seen from my constant posting about it, I am hosting this year's Battle of Hastings uh, with the authority of no one uh, appointed by nobody um, by the sole decision of yours truly. So, I am inflicting this upon everyone without <laughs> anyone asking. <clears throat> um. What are, what are your guys' thoughts on it? Are you looking? Uh, for I have a question. I, <laughs> I, I believe question. Um, that it was a battle that took place uh, where the current town of Battle is uh, in the year of ten sixty six on the fifteenth of October, um, and I it was named after the um, nearest right, town so at the time. That's what I. That's my. Those are uh, my thoughts on. Question. Oh, fuck's and sake. I have a question about it though. Um, will there be full frontal nudity? Um. If somebody sends me 28 mil naked figures, perhaps 28 mil naked figures. But as yet, there is no full front. Damn. Uh, do, you mind, 
do you mind if I ask? Because uh, obviously, I, I I know that you know you're a, you're a keen war gamer yourself. Uh, I believe um, Shia Reeve is. I am as well. I'm not sure about Guthrum and Conrad, but uh, mm. either way, mm. um, I, I I know you've dabbled, Conrad. I think in some Warhammer Fantasy, haven't you? Yeah, um, I know a lot about Warhammer Fantasy. It's basically what's my main thing. I know a right. little bit of 40k, but I don't know more about fantasy. Fair play. So so we've got at least four war gamers. So it's obviously something we all enjoy, but. Um, your usual style is obviously your comics online. So what inspired you to go with wargaming rather than something comic related? That is actually a really good question. Um, so I'm taking a little inspiration from... Uh, there's another chap who did, uh, on, a, on a smaller scale, um, and not to replace an event, uh, they did a little miniature recreation of an event. Um, and I thought that would be a really good idea. It, it, on its own, it's a really good idea. Really novel one. Um, <clears throat> is that the one I and, sent you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I am. And visually, it's something a bit different because I could just post comics or drawings of the reenactment for the day, which I don't think would be as good. The alternative, and one I did consider, was to animate the battle. Um, but it takes me hours to animate. Yeah, it'd be days. one of those. It'd be one of those skill set things. Mm. Yeah. So it, it it would take me far too long to animate it, and it, it, it by the time I'd animated it, that would leave no time for any of the other bits that go along with the event. Because as you may have seen, running. I'm not just reenacting or recreating the reenactment of the battle. I'm re recreating the entire reenactment, um, so all the schedule throughout the day. The, if 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 I'm not much mistaken, the the theme that you've got going on is is you're not doing the Battle of Hastings. You're doing the Battle of Hastings reenactment in 28 mil with some extra features, right? Precisely, which is why I've asked people to send in their um, their shield colors uh, and. For Patreon supporters who do have Viking Age kits uh, or or near enough, um, they're being represented twenty eight mil, so that when I do finally film this, um, show it off, people should be able to pick out their group colours. They should be able to see notable characters. Um, so Godmanson isn't just a model of Godmanson; it is Kendall from the Vike as Godmanson in his kit that he takes to haste. That's, I think that's a really, really cool way of doing it. Um, j just, just for the sake of understanding exactly what the flow is going to be like, um, is this going to be like a, 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 a live action kind of thing, or are you going to be taking um, short clips, mashing them together in one video, and then showing them at the time? This will depend on certain certain things that I've got to work out in the coming week. Um, I think large, it's going to. Be pre-recorded and then posted at the allotted hour, uh, with then followed by live interaction with um, the audience. I think that's the only, with certain things like the cavalry display and the fight um, the, the, sorry not the fight the weapons display, they'll have to be pre-recorded in nature. Um, I've also got to work around my broadband, or as uh, my mate John calls it, skinny band. So, I, I I can I can entirely sympathise with that because um, as I've said to uh, all of you in many times in a group chat, um, I, I suffer with rural internet TM, um, which is <laughs> yeah. which is patchy at the best of times, it, and it, uh, something as simple as Mountain Blade Bannerlord wanted an entire afternoon to download. Did you manage to get that downloaded, by the way? <laughs> I forgot to actually hit yes. You <laughs> motherfuck! Oh man. <laughs> It's it's when you send pictures of like some Roman reference into our group chat, and about half hour later, the video that you were, you were on about, or the picture you're on about, finally loads in. Oh, By which the, point the, we changed conversation. To yeah. Absolutely, the one the one for me was today when Alex was asking about um, Manica. Um, the, oh, which the for those listening who don't yeah. know the the Roman arm guards, um, there was I I phrased something wrong. So to explain what I meant, I tried to I took a video which was less than ten seconds. Um, of of me pointing out on my manica what I was trying to say, and I said, "Here, look at this." 
and then it was genuinely minutes later this video actually pops up to describe what i'm talking yeah, about it was My, very cute. yeah yeah Although, to be fair, I think yeah. you explained that you're now used to prefacing <laughs> everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I did end up looking at the chat and I said, what the fuck is that thing Ross just shared in the video? Like, I was just trying to get caught up on the conversation. Suddenly a fucking video about, you know, it was the first thing I saw is that armor thing. I said, what the fuck is that? I wanted to put it on. You want me to put it on? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to. I would love to, but trying to put on a Roman manica that has been taken off if you've got a st if you don't have leather straps and it is just leather thonging or chains takes about fifteen million yeah, years to actually get you into the I fucking thing. I don't want your excuses. Oh boo hoo! Boo hoo! Someone's yeah, never had to put a full plate harness on before. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I have. You I have slaves. Zero I have, sympathy, son. You Jim. I have. I have sympathy. slaves to help me into my armor. Um, they are that, called um, she, that's really um, not, she. Oh, whatever. Oh no, no. I, like joking aside, genuinely, some of the stuff that I wear, I do actually think that the way it it, it fixes it, it is only worn by people who can afford slave servants or 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 hangers on. But who the thing can is, any, them into any form it. any form of armors like that. Um, oh, oh, oh are, sorry, no, there I, are I, very yeah, there like, are very few like plate harness, even men at arms, like in a later period who are not sort of rich enough to have their own people to do stuff for them would have been would have been doing each other's armor i completely because... agree in fact the only one the only one from our period that you can get on by yourself without too much trouble is 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 just a, a male shirt or or a scale vest with with no extra yeah, attachment yeah i was i would i was going to um, assume a, a scale vest uh, yeah. But it has to be a basic one that does it. It just loosens at the side. It doesn't do up at the side, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So it's quite constrictive in size. Um, and I, I wasn't saying that like, oh, look how posh I am with my slaves. I'm saying like, in general, um, the majority of anything that's not just a male shirt, you you need help to get into. In the same yeah. way that, yeah, as you yeah, say, in, in the medieval in period, any period, yeah, yeah. yeah. We um, uh, in my in my medieval group, we have one person that we just chose and who is permanently now helping us putting armor on. Well, in terms of medieval hurry. groups, I find it tends to be um, anyone who's not on the field is the other people who tend to help, help to help with the armor. Well, um, for us, it is he goes on the field. He just has you know less kit than us. So, so you yeah, are yeah. not oh, the squire. Armor me up, peasant. So on the on the note of people armoring each other up, is that something we're going to see in uh, in Hastings twenty twenty? Ashley, is uh, is you having help set up all the armored troops? Or are you doing this whole thing solo? <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, they. <laughs> I'm putting them on movement trays. Right. Uh, okay. Setting like a per camera, and I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> oh man! Can you just, just, just for the sake of the visual appeasement, can you get? Um, you, you almost know what I'm talking about in the, in the, the World War Two film where the generals are all gathered around the table and they're moving the stuff across with a big. Uh, uh, a brush on the end of a stick. Oh yeah, yeah. So your your budget your budget version is you literally just grab your house broom and just start pushing models across the table. I, as an but... aside, movement trays for twenty five millimeter uh, bases are invaluable. I I have movement trays for all of my Imperial Guard infantry. Oh, what you don't you don't take seventeen years to do a single movement phase like a real man? Yeah. Well, I've, <laughs> I I still have so many models that it takes you know longer than I, um, than average. Like but... That's all. <laughs> you completely, I, I, I just love I just that. love the idea that this entire thing that that Goat One's been working so hard towards painting the figures, planning the schedule, everything. The whole event is just one movement phase because he insists on doing it properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, I'm fortunate in that the the only side that moved is the Norman side. Apart yeah, the Saxons the, the Saxons skip the movement phase and they skip the shooting phase, don't they? No, they they have a they, really they, they have that last bit, you know, the the assault phase. Oh, they um, have the very last assault phase down the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it backfires a little bit. Yeah, Saxon, but... Saxon turn five. There's one assault. That's it. Yeah, um, yeah because you but... know. Billy yeah, C's goes with um, Ro uh, Roger Barry. Oh, that's true. Yes, continually so rolling box cars and sniping. 
<laughs> so actually, um, that is a good thing to ask though, because it's something I've always wondered. Is in the uh, you shared a, a documentary about it, uh, Goat Warn, and um, I've, we've all seen dramatizations, and we've all, uh, I think, most of us, maybe with the exception of Conrad, have done at least one Hastings. Um, it's always Thanks for the rubbing case... it in, man. Thanks for uh, fucking rubbing it in. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it, it's always the case that we see that the, the the Saxon side just doesn't seem to have any ranged troops whatsoever. Nobody even throws some javelins. Um, now, is that just dramatization, or is that actually a thing that is likely to have happened? Um, uh, no. I thought they uh, chucked well, chuck stones at Saxon. I, I hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you talking about, like... The Battle of Hastings reenactment, or are you talking about in actual like battle sorry. itself? He's talking about battle itself. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I mean, uh, the, the reenactment and any dramatizations always uh, seem to imply that the Saxons never had even a throwing spear amongst them. What about in the real thing? They, they must the, have thrown things at so, the moment. Um, we don't have anything from the bed. I, I, I can't remember if there's anything in the bear tapestry. We definitely have a few uh, bits in the borders, but I can't remember if there's anything Saxon. I know there are. Turkish bowmen on the French side, interestingly enough. Um, huh. But um, what I would say is pretty much every battle in this period of time, in the Viking Age and late towards that period, there would have been a volley of javelins um, from pretty much every man on the field at the beginning of the battle, um, from the evidence we have in yeah, general. I don't... I end up hearing... I forgot where I heard this from, but apparently the Saxon, like, end up throwing... Chucking stuff, uh, rocks. Yeah, but that, the, that, uh, that I, I'm not sure about sources on that. The rocks. Yeah, like I'm not that, sure. About that that thing is, they do they they use slings at the reenactment, so I'm not sure on whether that's the actually team, sourced or whether the they, they use the rumor about, thing about now, rocks. You know they had both for a long time. They were the most popular ranged weapon in the ancient period because they're yeah. just absolutely fucking the, nasty. Yeah. So what, was can, can, about, what was the story about? What was the story about the Romans with that? I was going to bring that up. You ended up. You, wanted, you the, were on stream. There's, this, there's the, the story, story on stream. Yeah, there's the story about the Romans where um, I and I can't remember any of the names, any of the people who were involved. I just know the story. Um, from what I understand, the the Romans had just conquered one of the um, one of the other um regional tribes and they basically said they wanted them to give them all their men for the roman army um and when um when they were asked that their emperor or their king or whatever it was um called over a i think it was a slave um to stand like 200 meters away at the end of the the palace courtyard um, picked up his sling and in one shot um, got the guy right between the eyes and killed him instantly and said, all of my men are better than me. Yeah, it's just and the that, that became, as I, as I understand it, the um, the mainstay of the Roman uh, ranged sling I, I must yeah. I must confess I've not actually heard that story at all. Um but I uh, we, we can confirm from literature that uh, they absolutely loved um foreign slingers as an yeah. auxiliary regiment in the early period. Um to the extent that some legionaries, because a sling and some stones is not a particularly bulky thing to carry with you. Um some legionaries picked up slings and just carried them with them. So during the opening phases of the battle, they'd pop off a couple of sling stones from the from the main cohort as well, which could reach way further than any bow at the yeah. time. Well, from I, what I understand the, I have the specific say... this sorry the specific ones that I'm thinking of. From what I understand, they had a special technique where they they would bring it round their body and in, and ra rather than sort of swinging it uh, like winding it up, they would just. Um, yeah, it would. They'd bring it round from the left hand side, bring it up and over their head, and then let it go. Yeah, oh, you think that's uh, Roger's technique? I think he has so, that exact sling. Say that again. I said, um, I, I believe that's Roger's technique. Um, I think he has that precise sling. Oh, interesting. That. Yeah. Um, um, my, I the... always loved because I thought about making my own sling and start practicing with it because I love the fines. Like from the Greek and Roman periods, of like oh, the God, yeah. bullets they had saying something fucking cheeky, like "ouch." Yeah, that's that, that's, a, that's that's a Greek one. Um, 
Uh, the, my favourite one is that there's a there's actually, and I I, I promise you this is true. I 100% promise you this is true. There is a Roman one uh, with "fuck you" written on. Yeah, my, I know. Yeah, that's what I was going to oh refer to. That was I was going to refer to that one because that's my favourite one. Like, picture this: you're this ideal like Greek built like a Greek god, and you go in the field in your armour and everything. You're just taunting the enemy, and this fucking skinny fuckwit chucks you in the head with a sling, and the bullet says catch this like, <laughs> and this is why it was it so popular originally is that uh, up until the point where um the the western european started adopting recurve bows um the the sling was by far the the longest reaching hardest hitting projectile they could get mm. so entire regiments of slingers were not uncommon under uh, yeah. the roman empire for example yeah i, yeah, I feel the... like you've answered your own question there ross with the uh, slinging thing. <laughs> wait, wait what was my is... what was my question? That you started off by asking, did they have any projectile weapons at Hastings? Now you just kind of answered <laughs> it with. Yeah, oh, no, I see. Sorry, slick. sorry. Yeah, I was I was more wondering about the difference between um, reality and and uh, yeah. uh, fiction, I guess. Because uh, to be uh, would I be unfair saying that in a way the the reenactment is a bit of fiction because it does play up to the stereotypes we it's know. A, of the it's a lot of it, really. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, look at look at the. Uh, I would say a lot of it is to do with English heritage and how they promote yeah. it. Like they they sell flags for the two different sides, like it's it's France and England, but it's really not that simple whatsoever. Oh. Yeah, then, uh, uh, like, 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 somehow by voting for um, for Harold, that you are you are supporting, you know, England, good old, good old Johnny <laughs> England, and then like, then you if have Billy C in the corner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's just such a in the um, red corner, a basic in the red corner, Billy C and his whole chain mail. <laughs> <laughs> On, on on that note though, sorry, uh, just to check out one, are you going to be following the 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 script that the reenactment follows to the letter, or are we going to see some differences? Oh right, yeah. Will the Saxon win? <laughs> <laughs> there would be no, there be no point in me doing it if I was going to stick to you know the exact script of the battle. Um, it is going to be very much if I was in the commentary stand. So. Expect I won't give too much away because obviously I don't want to ruin the jokes before they're made. Um, but you, yeah, just picture Ulfruk. It sat in in the uh, um, in the stands doing the commentary over the over the microphones. That's that's the kind of vibe I'm going. For. So is so is Ulfruk going to be commentating rather than participating? Oh no, uh, I say that because obviously me being the one commentating. Uh, Ulfric is in the battle, um, as are the League. They have been um, assembled. Based. They are ready to take part. The League and Friend, a.k.a. the one Roman dude there going, I went to Byzantine once. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. That's your, that's your I went to Byzantium once guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still Bishop trying Odo. to figure out how to do the, um, the anvil, because I've got to make him up. Um, I actually... My friend, because he came here to Norway as an exchange student, he has now taken okay, over you Cardiff. Know, you know, sorry. That's all right. He has taken over Cardiff Normanis, and I call him my son because, you know, I've adopted him here in Norwegian reenactment. And I told him, your mission now as head of Cardiff is you have to kill the anvil. And he is <laughs> short as fuck. Like, I'm pretty sure uh, just Easter thing is taller than him. Oh, wow. So, you know. So we need a microscope to see this guy. So, yeah. so you know the old, um, I think it's the ogre model from Games Workshop, the skinny one. <laughs> you know that's that's what I think the uh, that's what I think you should use. Well, I've I've considered the uh, doing what I did for Tallboy, Jarl Tallboy, where I lengthened the model with green, um, or using a Space Marine uh, figure. <laughs> <laughs> Or just painting up a an M4 Sherman uh, in his um, Normanus. And just the helmet on top. Ca just the counterpoint. I'm just, counterpoint. Honestly, I'm just I'm just disappointed that you've not gone big dick on this. Bought a Warhammer Fantasy giant and painted it no, up no, in his no, colors. No, no, no. Even better, even better. That's, get a that's what I just. That's the joke I made. Just get a Warhammer. I just made titan. that joke, Ross. You can't yeah, steal I, I, that. 
hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Sorry, Conrad, are you suggesting he buys a, let me check the price, roughly £1,200 model from Listen, Portugal. listen, 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 mate. listen, listen. The meme. He-Man action these. figure. Oh, fucking He-Man. Look, so... And, oh, said, fuck yeah, He-Man. Um, I... I'm working to a budget. <laughs> if you want to get an action man, like, if you want to see these like extra bits, you know, either send them or pay for them. Um, but I, uh, I, I, yeah. I love, I love, I love the comics and I love the podcast. But I'm not blowing one and a half grand on a single okay, model just okay. for this event. <laughs> okay, Ross. Yes. Let's go half season on it. For Ash, for for Got Worn, for a Got Worn, we should go have these on it. It's for the meme. We have to. Why? Why us? <laughs> because you got the money, Richie Rich. Yeah, Richie Rich. <laughs> no, look if if you if you're gonna blow out on a wall or Titan, buy me a car instead. Jesus. <laughs> well, listen here, Mister Chosen Beggar, right now. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man. You sure? You sure? That's that's what you say to somebody who says, "Look, I'm working on a budget here." Is like, well, you yeah, know what? I'm not going to give you a hand with your, you with your some... rent or your fuel or anything. I'm going to buy you a lump of plastic, <laughs> yeah, uh, resin. Yeah, you. Oh God, resin. Sorry, yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, so just for that, we're buying. He you brings answer, you man. on this podcast, and what do you do? I don't buy him a Titan. No, I was talking to... Don't worry. He's talking to me. Listen, okay, just for that, we're downgrading the Titan to an action man. He-Man. He-Man. Get a stretch, Armstrong. Can I... Can I <laughs> if, if, if I may ask a slightly sensible question based on, on that, that massive tangent. Um, how tall is Yal Tallboy in real life? Do you have an uh, actual figure? Fuck. Uh, he is 6'7", six, 6'8". Oh, he is big a big boy. lad. He is really big. Um, oh, fuck. This is the weird thing about my group. Um, I, I'm i six foot, and I feel be, I feel average. I feel like <laughs> less than average in that. Group. I think because six foot got, is also the average in, in here, pretty much. Yeah, I, I feel like below average in the group, because we have Jarl Tallboy, who is, like I say, six, seven, thereabouts. Um, Sarge is as tall as him, uh, although not quite as broad. He's a bit more of a bean. Uh, so he's thick. Got, is what you're saying. Got, um, the guy who the shaved bear um, featured in one of my comics, where he's like, you know, what what's going on in his mind? He's on about oh, oh the guy who has the nice oh Richard tomatoes. Yeah, Rich. Uh, he's he's as big as them, and he's built more like a bear. Um, we um... had. Rich. So we had three Richards. Um, Mr. Lister, who is built like um, a brick shit house, uh, and also their height. Um, yeah, we we just uh, oh, there's Braden, um, who is a. I, th I think he's worked as a bouncer more than once in his life, and certainly strikes me as type. Um, he's also massive. Yeah, we we just have like this plethora of really big dudes in my group, uh, and they all make me feel small. Uh, even though, like I say, I'm six foot tall. Uh, so basically, you're the BFG out of the lot. You're the smallest one, but you have a kind heart, while everyone else is mean. No, uh, this is, is that what you're trying to say? Like BFG, um, because they are like the nicest you'll ever meet. But yeah, yeah I actually scale, really want to meet Richard, and so me and him can maybe cook one festival. Hopefully, at next tastings, I'm going to try to. Chat him up to make a feast for everyone. Oh yeah, he, honestly, I would. So I would love to meet Sarge while he's drawing dicks on tables. Yes, I. I, I, I look forward to meeting comic. Sarge as well. Uh, honestly, like you can't hate Sarge at all. Like honestly, if if you meet him and you don't get on with him, you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, such a solid dude. Um, he was the one who headhunted into group actually. um he just turned up plonked a let like a knife in my hand and went yeah um uh, made this for you. um made out of the half the foot ringer um you know <laughs> enjoy so so were you were you you were goat one before joining that group oh yes. wait do you not know this story russ 
I'm afraid not. No, sorry. And I, I know, I know the story of the of when Footbringer originally got broken. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Like yeah. I saw Listen, the video. Uh... Silence. Just, just silence. Sorry, did, we, did I cut out again then? No, uh, I think I, I, I thought everybody apart from myself and Comrade had cut out then. Sorry. No, 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 yeah. no, we were just we were just being quiet. All right, because I I felt like Alex was about to say something, and then it just went. I thought I'd cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So there was accidental silence. Ash chimes in and says, "Sorry, I thought Alex was going to say something." Alex says, "I thought Ash was going to say something." Silence again. Then just <laughs> random Dad, thump, yeah. random thumping <laughs> from Tom. Thump, thump. <laughs> <laughs> that's him water. That's a giant waddling around his house. Furious but, yeah. masturbation noises. <laughs> <laughs> he he found some nice metal. He found some nice metal work. Nah, nah. It's it's my phone. I'm mucking around with. It's got a spastic case on it, so I don't break it. Is that why thump it to it, make sure it doesn't break? Big cast alloy bloody case with silicone. It's a spastic case. Okay. Cast. Like cast Cast Ollie uh, you know what though? Because I've seen some um, some good phone cases advertised by uh, by JCB of all people when I was still doing field archaeology. Yeah, they make uh, good they make good ones. To be fair, they also make yeah. phones. I believe they make well, actual the case... JCB phones. I remember the case was was popular because one of my site supervisors actually got one and decided, well, let's test exactly what this can go through. Um, and he failed to break it by hitting it with a sledge or a mattock. Um, yeah, J- just to say, JCB do make rugged phones. Yeah. <laughs> I remember at work, um, I had one of my mates. He he could not have a good phone because he always broke it somehow. And then he had a cat. You know, those industrial fucking phones that you need to take a mallet to to destroy it. Oh, I thought you meant. As oh yeah, cat. cat no, 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 no. Cats, cats, <laughs> another cats, another digger company that makes them. Yeah, yeah I, th- I thought and, I thought Conrad meant he got a cat, as in like a pet cat. I thought that like, as well, but then I realized yeah, what he would meant I have after a pet he said cat, it. Yeah, why the fuck would I have a pet cat in the kitchen? Why would my mate have my pet cat in the kitchen? But yes, cat, cat, kitchen. cat, as in caterpillar, the company that yeah. also makes diggers. Yeah, got you. But uh, um, you were bragging about how indestructible that phone is, and he doesn't have to worry about it anymore. And then when he was talking about us holding his hand, shaking it. He slipped a bit of oil in the kitchen. He dropped the phone in the deep fryer. No! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he says, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. And he takes it out. He doesn't. And the case had melted. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so it's, it's, so it's fine oil. if you drop it on like any hard surface, whatever. But if you fucking melt it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so, uh, what, 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 what is this phone case resistant to? Hammers, yes. Dropping, yes. Car tires, yes. Even light water, yes. Is it resistant to 200 no. degrees C of fat and grease? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> the Scottish Mars bar treatment. <laughs> no, no, honestly, the impressive thing was it had like a flashlight on it and the flashlight turned on for like three seconds. Mate, that's <laughs> tragic. That's, that's tragic. incredible. Uh, I, a fun history fact for you, by the way, since this is technically a history podcast. Um, the deep fried Mars bar was invented in my hometown. All right, that's okay, crazy. Why... I don't care. Number one, Wait. whatever one. Why is that a fucking thing? Second of all, why is that a fucking thing? Wait, do you not? Did you not know about this? That was what. Oh, no, I... I did not know. I've heard so of that's... deep fried. I've heard of deep fried Oreos, but a deep fried Mars bar, no. Nah, so nah. deep fried Mars right, bar was right, the right, original. Comrade, to make you feel even worse, my my New Year's Eve, um, about five or six years ago, I was in Glasgow, which is not a quiet town. Um, I was in Glasgow with my friend in his flat, and our New Year's Eve consisted of ordering in uh, what the Scottish call a pizza crunch. I knew you deep, were going to mention is, those. Which is a deep fried pizza, for those who don't know, um, and, a, and a dessert of deep fried Mars bars. Uh, we had a few more glasses of lemonade and then went to bed. I'm retiring. I'm done as a chef. I'm fucking done. I'm retiring. I'm fucking done. I'm going to go over there. When I meet you at fucking Hastings, I'm going to kick you square in the balls. Just fucking bring that into my reality and tell me you ate it. I'm going to kick you square in the balls. Do you want to know the worst bit? I didn't enjoy it very much either. No, that's I'm the best gonna... bit. 
Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the best, best bit. bit. I'm gonna no, I kick spent, you off. I spent mo- I spent money on food and didn't like it. That's a bad thing. Yeah, it is. But you know, at least you didn't. If you told me that you enjoyed that fucking thing, I'd be fuming right now. <laughs> but it it just doesn't work. Like I ordered a pepperoni deep fried, and all I could oh, the... taste was deep fried bread. Yeah, of course you're gonna taste deep fried bread. It's been it's been fucking deep fried, man. <laughs> No, no, I mean, I you didn't get the... deep fried fucking pay, pasty pizza, and you're gonna tell me, oh no, it's too much oil in the bread. What were you expecting? No, 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 no. I was expecting the pepperoni. Anyway, uh, okay, I have a confession. I actually did. Do you always expect the fried... pepperoni? No, I or, did deep counterpoint: Do you once. always get the pepperoni when you don't expect it? If you know what I'm saying. I actually. <laughs> But... No, there was this one shitty customer who was complaining <laughs> his steak was terrible. I uh, was undercooked too much, even though we made it well done. So I was human and I dropped it in the deep fryer for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I slept at his place and sent it out. Let's hear what he says. And then he complained. It was that. No, he didn't complain. He said it was perfectly cooked, but it tasted of oil. You deep fried it. <laughs> like, yeah, I dropped it in a deep guy. fryer. This <laughs> guy. You animal. Listen, listen, it was listen, just he a, likes was... deep fried steaks, you know, there's nothing else for him. Well, Ross would enjoy well, it, Mr. Ross Fat would enjoy it, yeah, time. Ross would enjoy a deep fried steak, wouldn't, wouldn't you, Ross? He rats me out to his fucking girlfriend because I eat fucking meatballs with my spaghetti, but mate, nah. Mate, absolute he's a monster. Saint. Who, yeah, and he's a who would do this? Who would I, mean, do, who I, would... I, have, I have had barbecue with her where she's eaten rare and i've eaten well done yeah because she um, knows what she's doing yeah well no but the point is that she knows what i'm doing too so it's fine no you she's don't know what you're doing so what was that good one she's establishing dominance yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's the one she's the one that wears the pants in that relationship if she calls you right now go sleep on the couch you're so pussy web you would do it even though we live a thousand miles away yes. from each other, however, I am I will be fully honest that that yes, that is a thing because she could kick my ass quite easily. Yeah, exactly. She has. I mean, I can kick a your ass. She has a Sicilian theory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's northern Italian, isn't she? Well, her her one side of the family's from Sicily, the other side of the family's Lombardian. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So unless unless you guess central, you'd have been you'd have been on either way. Yeah. yeah. She will bring oh, out dear. the Sicilian and beat you with the pasta. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking we're hell! We're gonna away from that um, marginally racist tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So and she is listens anything... to the podcast. So. I was, yeah, well, that's the thing. So, I mean, if she if she takes offence, don't worry. She can she can beat comrade in person. Um, don't worry or, about it. I or, can tell or she can. we could just we could just preface this by saying it's all your fault. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ross, most things usually Ross, are. Ross behind the scenes told us to do this. Uh, that is not true. That Ross is not told true. Us. He said. <laughs> yeah. He said. He gave me fifty p exactly. He gave me fifty p, and you said. Talk about the Italian. He put fifty p in comrade. It's just yeah. so. It's gonna happen. So that 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 battle of Hastings that that goat one's running. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any, any last questions on that before we move on to our farm of the week? Uh. Uh. What's your favorite Hastings story? Like a US arena actor, like what what's your favorite story? The Battle of Hastings was a battle that occurred on the fifteenth of oh October ten sixty six. Battle of Hastings was a fucking pub crawl by Billy C and Harry uh Harry uh H from uh Who's Harry Norway. H? Fucking Harold Harada, baby. So uh, right. to answer the question, Conrad. Um That's that Harold Harada wasn't at the Battle of Hastings, mate. Oh my god. Dead at that point. Can you... Yeah, but are you going to stop by the bouncers on the way over there? But anyway... It's not quite Please go on. You're not coming in. You're not coming in, not in those trainers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dress code, man. Hey, no, no, no. It, the, the real reason he was stopped, because it's no shirt, no service, and as we know, he wasn't wearing his chain shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His, so, his oh, mate so, so, got very so drunk on the like bridge. Those, Hastings is one of those really classy nightclubs, was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And, uh, and, his mate, his mate got very upset on the bridge and took out like forty bouncers until you know he finally got <laughs> thrown out. And uh, then uh, the bouncer, you know, or the owner of uh, the club England for some reason said, "Yeah, now nah, you got to get out." And Harry said, "What you gonna fucking do about it?" And he just fucking. Hang on, did you just say the club England? Yeah, club England. What? That's where oh, yeah. it's where it's where Billy C and Harry H come off on their like fucking <laughs> yeah. map, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Listen, I, I listen, the worst I'm thing a chef. is Billy C and history. Harry H. Billy C listen, and Harry H. Billy do C, sound like Billy typical C. lad names as well. Yeah, fucking oh, Billy C. Man. You know, he went he went on Hastings and he heard like one of the bouncers on the left side was you know he was a bit of a fighting fella. So he goes, "Hey yo, Bjorn, you was a bitch." And Bjorn, because he was an exchange student, went down there and started fighting. Conrad, and, uh, yes. Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I do love Conrad's um, English accent. Uh, the from the borough of uh, Schrodinger, where it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the accents, yet none of them. But yeah, so to answer the question before we went on yet another tangent, I'm already regretting letting you guys in. Uh, <laughs> That's what owner of Club England said. Oh, shut the fuck up, Conrad, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, fucking hell, 50p is too much. Um, Brexit favorite... means Brexit, get him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Thanks, <laughs> I actually want to hear. Uh, I actually want to hear. Got warned. Well, actually, that that adds another one. But the first one is easy. Uh, watching a Norman knight, um, or, or Norman men at arms, racing up the hill ahead of his unit, um, shouting Normandy with his cloak billowing out behind him, looking every part. You know, he he looked fantastic. Really like going for it. And out of nowhere, this arrow just pegs him square in the nuts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just as he gets within kind of, you know, that like that sweet spot of where you, they get to that little distance where they can run to close the line. And, yeah. You know, make a little yeah. shot. He got to that distance. You could tell he was winding up for a run at our line. And there's just boing, boing. Um, Straight oh, who's that? Down. Who is that archer? I hope you bought that man a beer because that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful what shot. Was brilliant was that he was in the middle of shouting Normandy, so he goes Normandy, uh, and then <laughs> this, like, did, did he did he fold him. like wet paper or did yeah. he like? Oh no no no! So the best this is the great bit is that he rather than just hit the deck in, he changed down through the gears. So, oh. You know, just, oh no! Um, and like his his line had to kind of gently move around him as they closed with us. Oh. Right. So, so I'm assuming I'm assuming his final position was was bent over, you know, hands in the general area of his crotch, breathing heavily. Yeah, honest. Oh, you just oh. saw the wind go straight out of him. Just you just saw the life in his eyes just fade away. Yeah, less um, sad. You yeah, could, no yeah. more, no more bastards for him. Yeah, you could hear his descendants just being like yeeted out of existence, <laughs> oh. getting uh, thrust away by a single arrow. But um, to go back to what um, <laughs> Alex screaming Brexit means Brexit at uh, Conrad, we the nine fiftieth anniversary obviously took place like around the, uh, that same year that the referendum was called, um, and. There were German reporters walking, around, and I think some French ones, some other Europeans, and they were, they were subtly trying to gauge like the opinion of reenactors. And mm. I got fucking like sunk into it. So I'm I'm chatting to them about you know Battle of Hastings reenactment, blah blah blah, and then they go, so yeah, Brexit referendum. Um, what do you think? I'm like, um, um, <laughs> what do I say? I'm just like here to hit people with the sword. Um. So I managed to kind of say something fairly neutral, but, you know, like, maybe this... Yeah, to eat ass and bring fucks and I'm all out of ass. Something like that. (laughs) And they left. And the guy who I had just been talking to in his camp suddenly re-materialised out of his tent. Um, Because as soon as he'd realised that was what they were angling for, he just kind of sidled away from me and hid in his tent until they fucked off. Oh man. So yeah, I think that's another one that sticks. Yeah. But 
yeah, hopefully this will be another memorable year, even if it is, you know, just me dicking around figures. I'll be yeah. honest with you, mate. I think uh, it will probably be the most memorable one, barring the big one um, in 2016, uh, because it's so different. Ross, I um, I'm yeah, sorry. Stop to sucking them off, mate. Uh, Ross, can I ask you for a huge favor right now? Yeah. Can you please do your Trump impression? No. <laughs> come on. I don't do I don't do impressions live on. Okay, come like, on. Technically, is it? No. I'll, I'll, I'll do one. I'll do one if you'll do one. We could do that after hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah we'll do that afterwards. Yeah. Let's so, let's not get too deep in. So yeah. Um. One, two, three, two, one. So yeah, um, Battle of Hastings, hosted by myself, uh, Gert One Armband, 16th of October, lots to do during the day. Um, we've sort of touched on some of it today, um, but obviously, you know, proof's in the pudding. Come and check it out. Uh, if you want your group represented in 28 mil, get in contact. There's still time. I still have some miniatures left. Uh, I'm currently up to 50 Anglo-Saxons painted and based ready for action. Um, and I've got the same amount in Normans on my desk ready to go in terms of getting painted. So check it out. Um, the event is on the Goat Worn Armband page. Now, just to round us up for this evening, we have... The farb of the week. Let him up. Oh, oh dear. God. Ah, a woman. <laughs> I just want to point out the uh, the denim tunic that he's wearing. What? Wait, are we looking at the same you one? Can mate, you can barely see his tunic. Oh no, you're looking at the wrong one, dude. It's the oh, second fuck. one. Uh, the one with the, the, with the, one with the cat, right? Uh, yeah. wanna... The one with the two tusks, the big Thor's hammer, and all the beads, uh, clearly indicating that he is a woman. Do you mind, yeah, do you mind if I? Do you mind if I? I, I have a go at this one, seeing how yeah, much I've absorbed yeah. of the Vikings from you guys over the last few weeks. Yeah, man. do it. Yeah. Um. So first of all, the box pouch shouldn't Correct. be there. I believe it's Eastern um, to Swedish Viking. The so the, it's the, yeah. The belt yeah. is very, very heavily tooled, and I'm not sure if there's there's a way to tell if that was correct. At all. No sources for tooling on belts, as far as we know. I want to um, call he's got, out on the knife. He's he's got a gambazon showing, which yeah. I believe is not correct either. Gambazons um, are either showing or unshowing evidence wise aren't correct. Gambazons hidden underneath um, mail for the purposes of reenactment are fine. Okay, but he's he definitely shouldn't have one on show at, correct. at the very least. Yes. Um, uh, he's he's wearing a a very large Thor's hammer, which I can't remember why you've told me is a bit dodgy, but it's dodgy. Um, yeah. So you, when, when I was saying, um, oh look, a woman, it's because he's wearing two big old like little tusks. I think um, mm -hmm. those are si the the only sort of symbology we have off that to go off on that is uh, a man who has lost his penis, um, <laughs> and. Then large Thor's hammers like that were only found in women's graves, and that many beads. Again, I believe the, uh, for example, in Regia, the ruling is one bead for a male, um, because oh, wow, okay. it's just not a male thing at all. And he's he's gone big dick on those. So he's the best he's thing... gone small dick, really. Well, I or no dick, ironically. Um, yeah. So the best the best thing he could do with those, then, if I understand correctly, is to just chuck them. Yeet um, them. Yeah. 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 Uh, the last thing I feel confident picking up on is the Varangian bra, um, because <laughs> because oh wow that is that is a piece of work that where'd you begin with a fucking piece of work like that? Um, I can guarantee that somebody's going to say something about his his van braces, um, his Valsgard style van braces, and his axe. Um, but uh, I don't. I'm know getting what... yeah. PTSD from that axe. It's it's too soon. Yeah. So. Um... <laughs> But the sash, the blue sash he's wearing, that's actually a 17th century Polish weave uh, sash that would have around them in the stomach, 16th or 17th century. Um, no bull fat. The first one, the red one, I think that looks okay, but the blue one... Um, that, as as an aside, sorry. That's right. Because uh, in Poland at the time, to show that you were of some 
backstage or you would get a little weave like that or a sash that would keep around your stomach. And that's uh, that's one of those sashes. So um, one of the things I've also picked up on is uh, not just not only are the leather items he has inauthentic, they're also all, as far as I can tell, possibly not the box pouch, um, chrome tanned, I think. Uh, the Varangian bra certainly is. Um, the sheath certainly is. And the belt, I'm almost certain is, but can't quite tell. That knife, I think that's actually a Sami knife. I'm not sure. You can only see the handle, so it's difficult yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, because I see a lot of Sami knives with those types of handles. So the, I think that's you also knife. see a lot of Seaxes I've, with that kind of handle. No, I've, that's fair enough. I've put together totally authentic knives using very similar yeah. handles. So you can't tell anything. Yeah, that's um, fair enough. That's what makes again. Both... As uh, as Ross mentioned, the arm guards not authentic. Um, not for the period he's doing. And... and I think he's wearing some some sort of coif, but that may just be the way the male looks. But if you look at the shoulders, it looks like there's a a the, big semicircular is. strip. Uh, originally section. thinking is he is he wearing a weird like shoulder doubler type thing i think I he's think wearing been... some kind of no i think he's wearing some kind of doubler or coif is um, it because it, it, it's either it's been it's been fixed together really weirdly which is possible or uh, he is indeed wearing a doubler it's it's quite hard to tell it's one of the two way, it's um like, yeah yeah oh, he's wearing a sure. well around his neck a, a, a talks a talk's not sorry. Uh, he said he's wearing a talk around his neck. A talk's not good for this um, period either. Uh, no, neck rings are actually all right. To be fair, yeah. uh, I wouldn't necessarily get one that thin. That's very thin for a neck ring. But um, yeah, yeah neck, I, neck rings are legit. I actually used to have one that thin, and uh, if he's actually going to show up fighting with it, that's fucking terrible because I once got. I would. I wouldn't that. fucking fight in one. Yeah, I, but I, then I, again, I, I would. Have... Then again, I if I bought one, it would be solid silver. Yeah. So I still, I also wouldn't want to fight yeah. it for that I, reason. I, I fought with one, can, and uh, it almost choked me. Like can it I, almost um, choked me during a fight. Yeah, go on. Can I just point out the obvious thing about? Oh wait, no, never mind. You just said it. What? I, I was going to make a joke about choking, but you can cut that bit out. Don't worry. Okay. Um. Yeah, I can't tell much about the clothing underneath the. Uh, padding in the on oh, the in the mail. Um, I think the only thing right in this is the mail shirt, possibly the tablet yeah. weave. Mm. Mm. But I don't know enough about the pattern of the tablet weave to say. What well, uh, what about his jewelry? Is his is his jewelry a bit off as well? Uh, uh, it's, it's it's too it's too far away to see. To be honest with you. Because he, seem, he okay. seems to have two arm rings, uh, sorry, like, or wrist rings or whatever, and then he's got two um, finger rings as well. So the finger rings, again, it's not close enough to be able to tell, personally. Um, the arm rings, again, not close enough to be able to tell. There were ones like that made of twisted wire with terminals. But at the same time, there are also a lot of fakes, or like, not fakes, but badly made reproductions that don't represent what the originals looked like. Um, we talk about the uh, the Varangian bra. Uh, be the most you like that that one? And I feel like that would be more of a discussion. Like I understand, like I think the logic behind it because I see some people putting like a leather cord around like their biceps to keep like the chainmail bit tight. But I think that bra. But that's to do with chain. That's that. to do with male yeah. tailoring, though. Like yeah, the... exactly. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it, it's from a it's from a misunder a misinterpreted um, understanding of uh, no. ventails in manuscripture. All right, go on. I, it, it, it's an interesting one you say because I, I, the the reason I've I've always thought they're legit is that they they actually originate in my period. Um, the the Varangian bra, as we call it, starts start appearing in my period. Um, and I always thought that because it was called the Varangian bra, it actually carried on into the later Byzantine period and was worn by Varangians for yeah. obvious reasons, um, which for hopefully obvious reasons is also something I've never actually really bothered to research how far it went and what it turned into, because the best we've got for my period is there was a thing they wore around their chests that looked like a strap made of leather, perhaps colored, perhaps not. 
it could have been an inheritor of the old um, Falera harness, which is what you sometimes see the Centurions with, yes. where they've got all the medals down their front. Um, so it, it could have been some kind of metal harness or decoration, perhaps, because we only see it on really high status people. So you see I emperors see, and generals with it. I can imagine it as some kind of applied decoration. You know, you've got you've got a fairly plain like mail or scale armor you want to dress it up a bit but the, the weird thing is though we only really see them on people who are wearing something like a musculata which is already big bling, dick bling. look at me yeah. i've got all the bling yeah um or somebody wearing scale which i mean even basic brass scales if you polish them they look fucking tits so um my thought is that it's either the artist has put something in the wrong place and it just looks wrong because we only get them in paintings and mosaics um, so either it's a belt or a sash that's been put in the wrong place, or it is some kind of decorative strap, um, and it was decorated with something really fine. So we know that the emperors sometimes had their leather belts decorated with actual gemstones. Also, so rich that that it supersedes musculata by that's the thing. Enough. Like it, it's it's so it's got something in it that is so rich that it's more it's 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 bigger dick than a full gold musculata you know yeah. so it must oh, be something oh. like precious stones or or something like that um so the the idea of one being made out of plain leather is quite odd to yeah. to my mind it, it it's it's definitely a status symbol of some kind for for us and we don't know exactly what it is um so i assumed that it did evolve into the into the byzantine period like i said but i mean you guys are sort of saying that it's a it's a misinterpretation of yeah so of, uh, what what you see is there's um square ventails which are the flaps of mail that go up beneath the chin and close over the mouth when you when you're wearing a, an integrated coif or a separate coif, but separate coifs a lot of the time, because they develop in the period of the 13th century, were designed to be worn underneath a faceplate helm and didn't have them. Um, but yeah, so it's a it's a square flap of mail that hangs down, and it's got a le- um Well, I would from from the depictions uh, a sort of leather edge on the inside, probably for comfort. Um, and then the the bits going off it are probably the ties that you would then when you pull it up you tie it around your your head basically. It's it's a practical part of the armor that's been misinterpreted as something either yeah. maybe functional or or decorative, but it's it's definitely just part of their armor. It's not some extra. Pretty device. much, yeah. It's the inside, so you're seeing you're seeing the padding of the ventail on the straps. Okay, okay. Because it's See, that that makes sense. It folds up basically over the face. That's fair enough. If I could add something. Go on. Um this was exacerbated, I believe, by Osprey. Um yeah. they oh. interpreted it as as you see in this picture. And obviously Osprey got about a bit in the early days of reenactment, so lots of people picked it up. I I never understood the hate for Osprey books because they're wrong and 30 years uh, out think, of date I think to, to, yeah to 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 be to give osprey their credit um they're, they're an old company who've been writing for a long time and they haven't changed their mainstay of authors or their information in that period they um, do some bloody great books especially on the early modern period like their uh, world war Two and world war one stuff can be really good anything that requires a bit more effort to research though they're yeah. usually yeah. as as the Reeve said, they're usually a good period out of date, or it's somebody's supposition that has been written as if it is fact. Um, yeah. We see a we see a lot of this for Romans, where there it, there's some great illustrations of stuff that we know is a fact, and then right next to it, in the same image, is a guy wearing stuff that's just been made up completely, yeah. or is it, or is or is at least a very old fashioned way of thinking about it. I think it. one one you see a lot is when they they want to make a specific cultural derivation when there is none none overtly anyway like let's say for example and this is just an example i don't know if this specific example is in is in an osprey book but let's say you have um 10th century norwegian and anglo-saxon they actually don't look that different really once you you know in reality that they're, they're most likely wearing a tunic they're most likely wearing the same kind of trousers leg wraps um, etc. The only differences would be in their nuances. 
but an Osprey writer might think, well, that's not enough to differentiate them and go on things such as these theories that uh, that Ross was describing. Oh, and this is where we end up, I guess, enough. with with um, somebody going, I went to Byzantium once and he's got fucking baggy pants yeah. and, and lemolar and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fair the, enough. The example um, I often refer to with Osprey as a, a, a prime example of where they get it wrong is with regards to Kievan Rus, where they're being described and the author of that particular uh, passage says... Is this Islamic or...? No, 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 no. Um, of the Osprey. Oh, 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 the oh, right, yeah, with you. Yeah. Um, he says, oh, uh, they. We theorize that they use square shields like the Slavs. Um, and then it says, see Slav page this in this book. Um, so I followed that back, and it's a line about Slavs using square shields. By the same author in a previous piece of work. Yeah, so it's, referenced... it's not it's not an actual yeah. citation. It's like yeah, he referenced referenced himself, um, and that that re- reference in itself had no citation. So um, he'd made a theory based on his own work and his own um, supposition and made an assumption, and that's led to certain groups using square shields of Kiev and Rus when there's actually zero evidence for that being the case. It's a bit of a pig. There's a there's a there's a chap who's quite prolific in the in the the Roman sphere who I won't name drop out of politeness. Um, but he he writes for Osprey, and a but lot of his ideas. You can tell us later. I can tell you later, but a lot of his ideas are quite problematic. The biggest one is that he insists that um the the Romans use leather armor. Um, Ross, Ross, all you have to do is give me 50p and I'll shout his name on top of my lungs and I'll take full responsibility. Uh, no, no, this is uh, honestly, this is where I'm going to it. Well, because because he's he, he, he self references frequently um, and his ideas are based on supposition, but he writes them as fact. And to his mind, if you if you haven't actually written a book or published academic papers, your opinion is not worth listening to because you're beneath him. So there's yeah. that arrogance, there's that arrogance of I've published a book, i.e. I've published for Osprey, um, and uh, and to him that means that he is. Oh, he is, is, this, um, is this the guy? Is this the guy that was using that that you sent a screenshot of to the Maybe. group chat the other day? Maybe, but we'll we'll check it later. But um, but basically the 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 point I was going for is that uh, th- this guy who writes a lot of Osprey books about Romans, um, and people read his books and use them as sources is self-referential to the extreme and can often refuse to accept any criticism from anybody that he doesn't think is worth his time. Yeah. It's 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 just a it's a big ego trip. Go on. <laughs> Sorry, Olga just came in. Hi Olga. Uh everyone's the everyone says hi Olga. Hi Olga. Uh, say hello, woman. You're not famous. Fuck off. We're doing a fucking podcast. <laughs> uh, Alex says, "Fuck off. We're doing a podcast." You, you anyway, missed out the you missed out the last word. Does he know that I'm Polish? Yes, he knows you're Polish. Fuck Alex. <laughs> she says, "Fuck you back." I think she likes you. Thank you. Anyway, anyway, say I'm thank you. Hopefully that answered your question, Comrade, about um, Osprey. Yeah, it did. It, it did. It did. Yeah. So thank you very much. After uh, <laughs> turning into a bit of a dunk on Osprey, shall we bring this back to our fob and give him a score? Uh, that is that is four four salt shakers out of ten. Well, fuck the order, I guess. Uh, actually, <laughs> um, he is on top. Oh, so he is. I see it. Yeah. So suck a penis, man. So just I'll give him a big fat Varangian bra. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, go through him. Go on. What's your uh, your take? Oof. I'm gonna give him two out of ten brass mounts on an oversized tassoli pouch. Because there's a there's a lot there. There's a couple of nice details. I think that that knife has has a chance to be quite a nice blade, but it's just ugh. Uh, Mr. Ross, what's your uh, 
Well, I think based on the fact that the he he's clearly got the means to get decent kit, he seems to be misadvised on what is the right thing to go for. Um, I might rate him a bit higher than you guys. Um, I'm going to give him 17 early medieval um, Thor's hammers out of the 75 that have been found. <laughs> Generous. Uh, Shire Reef? Um, two strips of Falsgard, um style <laughs> Ah, uh, fucking van braces out of a, a pair of Valsgard van braces. Um, he's 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 uh, he's just like he's he doesn't look shit. As if you ignore the history, you know, like he doesn't look too bad. Although I'd still, yeah. well, I don't know. That's what I mean, like, when I said he was he was misguided, like it looks to me like yeah. he's just got bad info on what to buy if, more if, than. If Osprey were a reliable source, <laughs> this, he, this he'd be ideal off. right now, and we'd be like, wrong. Th this looks straight out of an Osprey wait, illustration. Wait, this is this is an Osprey primary source. Yeah, which which is the problem, really, because if again, if we assumed that the Osprey books were reliable, this is a great interpretation of what they display and describe, but. Being that it's as we've discussed, it's not. I've got to give it a um, ooh, one boar tusk out of a herd of of thirty angry hogs that require an AK forty seven to deal with. You mean thirty to fifty wild pigs? Fifty, yes, thirty to fifty wild pigs. That's it. Is and there it's... a reference here? I'm not yeah. getting. Yeah, yeah it well, is. This, this is a deep cut um, <laughs> for an argument for semi-automatic weapon, just in case 30 to 50 Ah, yes, okay. okay, yeah I do, I I do feel green page. I do feel a bit bad for this guy in a way, because it's clear that he's, uh, to me, or at least I think so anyway, he's just been given that bad Osprey advice, which I think is why I was being a bit more generous, in that if somebody said, look, this is how it should look he seems to be interested enough and have the means to get the good kit. He just doesn't know what that is. That was, uh, that was what got me into deep waters. It was my starting reenactment kit. What, bad information? Yeah, bad information. Uh, just kind of, you know, oh yeah, this is all right. So, you know, of course I get it. No, I'm finding, nah, it's not all right, mate. You know? And that's, that's the thing we've got to look at in a way is that, I mean, everybody is a product of the group that they belong to. Um, yeah. And so, or their own research, which yeah, so I'm yeah. actually right now. I keep telling my uh, the new beginners saying, "Yeah, don't go to that place. The only thing they sell is shit." So I'm gotten really good at telling what is shit and what is not shit, like materially wise. It's this is it's it's one of the things I'm finding difficult about writing a kit guide at the moment because I'm actually just tempted to write, "Here's your kit guide," and it's just one sentence. It's just ask Ross. Because uh, I, I can't I can't be asked trying to figure out exactly where is the right place to go for X item, Y item, Z item, um, because they might change in a year. That's the, yeah. <laughs> that's the other also, annoying part. In, all, in all fairness, with, with yourself, um, you reference everything. So like if if I you know, if if you if you say something to us, there's always a reason behind it. Like with that thing yeah. we we're talking about today, I I wanted you to create a rebuttal to what I was saying so I would understand why it was wrong. Oh, about the mannequins today, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, for, yeah. For, for as an example, you know, you will always cite why things are what what they are. So it's not like yeah, we're if... we're just taking your word for it. Yeah, and, and but... I could just be making it up, and nobody would know also, any better. Sort of thing. Yeah. Also, uh, this just came to my mind. Or he might be getting actual good information, but he ignores it because I have a certain American that trains with us, and we all give him like Chum. tips on how to get a good quits. Get good kit, and he goes, "Yeah, but I'm still gonna do this." And then he comes. Sorry, did did someone say Callum? No. I was literally thinking that. Not Callum. No, 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 not Callum. This fellow's called Liam, and uh, and uh, he comes. There is like, another. He, he has chatted <laughs> to me about Viking Lemela. I tell him there's no fines. He goes to another person. They tell him there's no fines. Then he goes to another fella, and he goes, "There are no fines." But Lamela was used in this region, so he just goes like it's a Jim Carrey film uh, theme from 
dumb and dumber. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> and then yeah, he shows, um, but, then he but, shows but, up to training in like chainmail and lamella, even though uh, he previously like aluminum lamella because that is light and he has back problems. Oh god! Oh, it's so, it's, it's uh, the samurai it's Hastings all over again. <laughs> I so, beg your pardon. Ah, oh. so as, as, the, this as, the as, samurai sorry, as, 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 Hastings. If, 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 as, as a quick aside, Alex, uh, just if you, this is going to be obviously edited, but at the same time, um, if you want to link this on to what Conrad's just said, for anybody listening, if you ask somebody for advice and they give you advice and they back it up with sources and they say, this is how it should be, this is how it should be, and they answer your question and you then ignore that advice, that's your own fucking problem then. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you've, if, and if you go to somebody for advice and they offer advice and it doesn't match up with what you wanted to hear, don't be a dick and say, oh, well, actually, it's wrong because I'm doing it in this context. Right. Because that's just yeah. really fucking rude. So to round it off, then, um, looks like a product of poor sources rather than because uh, it's well executed with the wrong source. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think you, you summed it up perfectly by saying this looks like an Osprey picture that's come to life. Yeah, if this was like a fantasy film, I would literally nod my head saying, "Okay, that's that's good for a Vi fantasy Viking." Like, I, it's probably better than most fantasy Vikings that we see. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. We're looking at you, Vikings. <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 he's been missourced. Yeah. yeah. Or you so know, he didn't really like there, the sources. I think we've gone uh, well over the hour or so that we usually a lot. Um, that, that's fair. But thank you for joining us for quite a chaotic, but I think productive episode. Unlike my first Obviously, one. Obviously, Ross uh, and Conrad, regular features um, and regular commenters on my uh, on my page and indeed um, all other pages. So thank you to you guys for joining in. Uh, no problem, thank man. you for having well, us. Absolutely yeah, pleasure. Thank you, thank you for having us. We'll yeah. send you the bill. Yeah. It, no, it's, it's, it's nice to have you back on, even if it is in almost impossible to manage both of them at the time. Um, I think Guthrum of Norvik uh, has had a nice chilled session, having like relaxing in the background. Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> he's 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 filling in for just Easter this evening. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm busy working well, on stuff as well. The, the sex appeal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Um, just Eastern thing. He's a sex appeal of the episode. <laughs> He's got mad. Oh bear. god, we've got that. into dire straits, lads. Right. Um, Rule thirty fours. Okay, so let's let's take the fifty p out of Conrad and Ooh. wrap it up with a thank you to our regulars, Guthrum and Shire. Thank you again to our guests, and I thank you all for tuning in yet again to another episode. Uh, a live episode is being planned for our 25th uh, and obviously check out plan go one on band host battle of hastings coming up in october uh thank you very much and see you later hi uh, cheerio see, see you later all. thanks very much guys Th thanks for having us <laughs>